Hey guys, I'm sure the majority of you are using a third party launcher and it's most likely Nova Launcher. Even though this is a great option, I wanted to show you a few others that you may also enjoy. So here are what I believe to be the best Android launchers of 2019 so far. Let's start it off with Poco Launcher 2.0. Of course, this is the default launcher that comes with all Poco phones, but you can download it onto any Android because it's also in the Play Store. At first glance, it looks like any typical launcher, a swipeable app drawer with widgets and icons on the home screen, but what makes this unique is all the exclusive features that you get. This includes having categories in the app drawer so you can find specific apps quickly, a search bar at the bottom of the app drawer for easier access with one-handed use, and I love how you can see previews for settings customizations. It really makes it quick and easy to get the look that you want. Poco Launcher may not be the most feature-packed launcher out there, but it does have the essentials, and it does a great job of implementing them. Next up is my all-time favorite launcher so far called Launch Hair 2. It's been out in alpha for well over a year now, yet it's still not on the Play Store. I'm not sure why. But what I love about this launcher is that they're always releasing new updates that include unique features or options for customization, and you can customize the crap out of your home screen. At first glance, it gives you that Google Pixel Launcher look, but you get a lot of extra features. This includes customizing the at a glance widgets, changing the look of the dock, support for icon packs, icon shapes, a dark theme, custom fonts. You can change the search engine for the search bar to a different website. It has integrations such as Lawn Feed to enable the Google Discover panel on the left side of the desktop. Install Sesame for a powerful universal search engine or Launch Step Magis module for rooted users to integrate the launcher with the new recent app overview page on Android Pie. And it supports gestures with one of the options allowing you to play YouTube Rewind 2018 in a distorted way. That's just the tip of the iceberg. There are plenty more settings hiding in the Launcher 2 Alpha and I highly recommend it. Of course, I have to feature the famous Action Launcher Pixel Edition. If any launcher goes above and beyond when providing unique and crazy features, it's definitely this one. It offers all the basic features you'd expect from the Pixel Launcher, but it includes extra goodies such as Quick Theme to make all the colors match your wallpaper, Action Search lets you search for system settings, apps, contacts, the web, and more, Shutters which lets you swipe on an icon to reveal its widget, it supports the Google Discover Feed panel when you download the Action Launcher Google plugin on apkmirror.com, I'll drop a link down below. It has a neat exclusive animation called Adaptive Zoom that zooms an adaptive icon to the center of the screen as the app loads. You can quickly change an icon as the launcher instantly suggests icon alternatives from your icon packs, or you can pick a custom icon. There's a full featured panel on the home screen that slides out from the right side with all your favorite apps and widgets. And if you use Action Dash, which is a Google Digital Wellbeing replacement, this launcher provides a shortcut to jump to the usage stats for any app. Those are most of the main features that I wanted to point out, but there are even more. Of course, it still has the basic launcher settings, such as support for icon packs, a dark theme, custom grid sizes, screen transitions, etc. The only thing that I need to mention is that most of these features that I just talked about are in the Plus version, which costs a little over $7 to unlock. So before purchasing that, consider trying it out to see if you enjoy the launcher first. Hyperion Launcher is next on this list and it's very similar to Launcher 2. However, it's not as feature packed. It's still very customizable, allowing you to change the color of every little object. You can customize the icons to the extreme. It supports the Google Discover panel with an app called a Hyperion Dock. You can change the font, hide the apps in the app drawer, lock apps using your fingerprint, and much more. The home screen settings are very organized and it doesn't overwhelm you with dozens of menus, so it's not going to give you a headache when you try to set it up. It keeps things simple and is a great alternative to launch here too. So this one might be out of the ordinary, but if you want to make your home screen look like the iPhone's launcher, then your best bet would be Launcher iOS 13. It's kind of crazy how similar this looks to the iOS launcher. All of your apps are on the home screen and open up very quickly. Swipe down for the search functionality. The leftmost page is for your widgets. You can rearrange the apps, hide apps, or delete them straight from your home screen. Of course, you can only have four icons on the dock. There's no support for icon packs. The apps aren't in alphabetical order, and the only thing you can really customize is the widgets panel and the wallpaper, just like iOS. You can even download another app called Control Center iOS 13, which is by the same developer. With it, swiping from the edge of the screen will bring up a control center that looks exactly like the one found in iOS. Every toggle and setting works like a charm. The next launcher I wanted to show off is the Microsoft Launcher. Surprisingly, it's very informative and keeps you up to date with the news. For starters, the home screen has all of your widgets and icons. You can swipe up from the dock to expand it, and that provides an extra column of apps and a quick settings menu to control system settings. 
Swiping down from the middle of the screen pulls up the app drawer, but the most useful feature in the Microsoft Launcher is the leftmost panel on the home screen. The first tab called Glance gives you your next calendar events, tasks, sticky notes, Cortana, which is Microsoft's voice assistant, and Screen Time provides information on how you use your phone and what apps you use the most. The News tab includes all the latest news reports, you can customize what types of news you would like to see, and the Timeline tab shows you any past activities you started on your Windows PC or your phone. The launcher is also really customizable when it comes to the essentials, so if you want something that will provide you with a ton of information instantly, this is a go. If you're looking for the complete opposite and want something extremely simple and minimal, then check out Niagara Launcher. This launcher just has all your apps neatly arranged in an alphabetical list. The front page has the time, date, and all of your favorite apps. The middle pages list all of your apps along with a search bar, and at the very last page you have the launcher settings and an option to change the wallpaper. However, these settings are extremely minimal. The only tweaks that you can really make are to add a button for a Google search, change the icon pack, change the theme to dark, and hide apps. EV Launcher is very similar to the Microsoft Launcher. The app drawer has a similar look. The leftmost panel also has its own news feed, which you can personalize, and it has its own search bar to look for apps or make quick web searches. It also has the basic launcher settings, such as icon pack support, custom grid sizes, dock customization, gestures, backup and restore, and more. There's not much to say about this launcher since it's so basic, but honestly it's a great option if you're looking for something simple and modern looking. Another feature packed pixel inspired launcher that you should check out is Customized Pixel Launcher. It doesn't have a ton of unique features like Action Launcher, but you can customize what it does have to the extreme. This includes the home screen, at a glance widget, app drawer, folders, dock, overall theme and icons, shortcuts and pop-ups, and more. You can even enable the Google Discover panel by downloading their plugin. That link will be in the description. Personally, I still choose Launcher over this, but CPL is definitely much more customizable. Last but not least, I have Smart Launcher 5. This launcher is designed for anyone who wants their launcher to automatically organize everything for them. The theme colors automatically match your wallpaper, the leftmost panel keeps you informed with news that interests you, and the app drawer categorizes all of your apps. It even has its own icon pack, which I think looks a bit cartoonish, but I feel like there are a good amount of people who will dig it. On top of that, I love that they designed their launcher to be easy to use with one hand. They have all the menus and items easily accessible at the bottom of the screen. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that most of the features are only available in the Pro version, which costs $7 to unlock, just like Action Launcher. But if you give it a try, you may find it to be worth it. Either way, those are my favorite Android launchers for 2019. If you guys enjoyed, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so with the notification bell turned on. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.